is it ready to go live? Oh, I guess. And I see the chat room over here and a bunch of other crazy boxes. Do I need this box open? Hi, everyone. Hang on. We'll be right there. Can I close this? Yeah. Okay. And throw that away and throw this over there. And now, as I do every time we start the online office hour or any online interaction, could I please get a shout out from anybody who's in the chat room that you can both see me and hear me coming at you live from an undisclosed place in Blacksburg, Virginia. I see some chatter going on already. Is Blue Subaru? I love that screen name. Already jumping in, saying can hear and see. A first chime chatter from Sartha or Sart. Sartha KG02 can hear and see me. First time chatter from Ben uh, C Day. C, C Day? Side Day? Uh, welcome, Ben. A first time chatter from Thao Jen can hear and see me. First time chatter from Sydney M. Thanks for jo joining, Sydney M. M Dog 01 is rejoined back in the Hizzle in the dog house. Thanks, M Dog. First time chatter from Motor Brothers. First time chatter from EW140401. What an interesting screen name. First time chatter from Cold Cut Cornbread. Now that's a screen name right there. <laughs> Cold Cut Cornbread. I want to open up a restaurant with you. First time chatter from S. Sean. Ooh, I like that. Uh, 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 Jake Wrangler back in the hizzle. Welcome back, Jake. First time chatter from the one and only guy. 54, three, two, one, first stream. Cupid Dizzy's back in here saying, I'm sorry, Cupid Lizzy's back in here saying I'm here. Uh, man on, man and, man and 306 said, hey, hi, Professor Boy, last semester, he is the goat. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> and a first time chatter from Hamad X. Hamad X, a first time chatter from Terse City. Uh, uh, Hamad X 2002 says, hello, professor. Hello. Uh, and Terse City has already finished the work for the entire week. My friends learn from Terse City. Terse City's already acing this course and is way ahead of the curve. Well played, Terse City. And well played to all of our first time chatters who are uh, joining us for the very first time. That's why you're a first time chatter. Hopefully not last time chatter. <laughs> they should have a button for that. This is the last time I'm coming in here. This is my last time chatter. Button pops up. I'm out. Uh, be sure, Katie, uh, or some of you in the chat room, to remind us to, what do you call it, storm another Twitch user? What do you call it? Barn burning? No. Yeah, raid. Raid. Uh, I've been... Uh, 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 taught last semester we should use this crowd to raid another um, person on Twitch. So while we're chatting here tonight, you all browse around Twitch, or if you know somebody on Twitch or a crazy person, uh, way crazier than me, on Twitch that you would like us to raid their live stream after we, after we wrap up, uh, please give us those uh, recommendations or be thinking about those recommendations for the next... Ah, 20, 30, 50 minutes, however long we uh, want to hang out tonight. Uh, I got another first time chatter from Ben Goodman up in the hizzle saying first stream. First time chatter from Daytona. Let's just call him Daytona 5000. Uh, says, I hope I can keep up with the things I got to do. Looks like a ton. That's a great place to start, Daytona 5000. Because let me explain some things right from the get go. Well, actually, let me do this first. <coughs> Welcome to World Regional Geography, my friends. <laughs> you are in Geog 1014, World Regional Geography, a.k.a. World Regions, a.k.a. Let's learn about the world and have a good time class. With me, Professor John Boyer, here at Virginia Tech, home of the Fighting Hokies, whoop, whoop, at the best university on the eastern seaboard of the greatest nation on earth, the United States of America. Now, I don't know about all that, but this is how it's fun saying it. So, uh, for those of you browsers who were just uh, uh, accidentally uh, fell in here from other places on Twitch, you're like, who the hell is this loudmouth guy? I'm a college professor uh, here at Virginia Tech, 
uh, teaching a class called World Regional Geography, where we get together every Monday night, or as many Monday nights as I can stay awake for. Uh, I'm old and decrepit. Uh, but every Monday night I'm awake for, we will get together to chat about the current events of the world, uh, things going on in class, lecture material, and any other questions. It really is all a Q&A. It's what it boils down to is, it's all about what you all want to talk about, questions you want to ask about current events or other things that are happening on uh, in the class or in the world. I, I can give dating tips, uh, culinary tips, uh, food and wine pairing. I, we run the smorgasbord of, uh, of entertainment <laughs> and advice here during the online office hours. However, I assume most of you are not randomly here, and you came here with purpose and intent because you knew what this was because I sent you an email earlier saying, Hey, uh, if you want to learn more about how the class works, this is the place to do it. And indeed it is. And I said, I went off on this uh, tangent because Daytona 5000 said, uh, this looks like a lot of work. It is. Uh, RJ Bacon 10 just dropped me a heart and is following. Thank you, Bacon. What a great screen name, RJ Bacon. I hope that's your real name. If not, change it. Let's start a restaurant called RJ Bacon's and Son. I'll be the son. <laughs> okay, so, uh, oh, Callista Malfoy is in the hizzle. Welcome back, Callista, Callista Malfoy. And as I always say, give it back, Malfoy. First time chatter from Cars, Cars, Sinkoats. Cars, Sinkoats? In here for the first time. Welcome, Cars, uh, or Cars, Sink. Uh, so back to Daytona 5000's question. There's a lot of, uh, of work here. There is. And so one of the things I want you to understand right from the get-go before I even field questions, so cue up whatever questions you have that you want to ask me about how this course works. One of the things I want to make clear to all of you all about what the, how the course works is you're already great students. It's the first day of class. You've already read the emails. You've probably already read the syllabus. I hope you already got your textbook. I hope you're already on Moodle. I hope you're already uh, doing work like Tercis Tercity, who's already finished the full week's work. But I don't want to frighten you. I intentionally, I start strong. I'm a strong starter because then I like to retire early. So I start strong in the semester and I encourage you all to start strong. And what I mean by that is get on it. Let's not play around. We actually started the course a week ago for those early birds who wanted that worm. Uh, and the, the, the thing is, I, I'm encouraging you to do all the work you can, as much as you can, as quickly as you can, not as quickly, but as early as you can in the semester. Because here's the trick about this course, you can actually finish it early. Uh, most of you great students who are tuning in here on the very first day of class when you don't even need to, uh, are going to be the go-getters that finish before Thanksgiving. Some of you will finish well before Thanksgiving. Some of you may finish by the first week in November, and that's what I'm pushing you to do, and I'm doing it quite intentionally because most of your courses are lame. <laughs> and I don't mean that, really. All of your courses here at Virginia Tech are all taught by top experts in their fields, and they're all awesome. Uh, uh, ben, ben, in, ben Inslay, 23, just dropped a heart and is following. Thank you, Ben. Um, what I mean by the courses are lame is that uh, old college professor types, of which I'm in that category now, but I was never really that old or really a college professor. Carrie Compton just dropped a heart in his following. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, most college professors, oh my God, look at all, Tersity just dropped a heart in his following. Thank you, Tersity. Uh, uh, most college professors on day one give out the syllabus. <laughs> They used to do it in paper form. I don't know if they still do that. Oh, my God. Dark Foe 27 dropped a heart in his following. Thank you, Dark Foe. Or is it Pho, the Vietnamese noodle dish? Um, most college professors hand out a syllabus on day one. And some of them read the syllabus. That's always a little sad. And then they say, okay, well, then here's the work, what we're going to do. And your first assignments will be due in two weeks or a reading or a paper or a quiz or your midterm exam. I don't play that game, all right? This course is based on how hard you work and how fast you want to work and how much you want to work ahead. A whole bunch of assignments were already open last week. A whole bunch of stuff is open right this second. Actually, not even a whole bunch. It's fairly light load, but it's more than usual because we had such good turnout last office hours last Monday, I put in a bonus film quiz, which I've never done in my 25 years of history. I put up an international film quiz before the semester even began. That's how much I love this class already. 
And so there's a bunch of work up there. You're going to get a bunch more work every week of the entire semester all the way through to the last day of class. There's work to be done. But here's the kicker. Daytona 5000, you don't have to do every single assignment. If you're already overwhelmed this week because you just started at college and you just moved in and you took way too many classes and some of them are hard, you don't have to do every single thing. But I encourage you, while all your other classes are being lame in the first few weeks of the semester, to work hard in this one and get ahead because we have more assignments than you need to do for this semester. At the end of the day, because this is a points-based system, there isn't a single thing you have to do. There's not a midterm and a final. There's not a, a term paper. There, there are a series of quizzes and assignments and things you do for points. It's all about earning the points, much like going to work and earning your salary, earning money. So you want to do things. You want to be successful. You want to buy things. You have to get money, and the harder you work, the more money you get. That's the way this course is built. The harder, faster you work, the more points you accrue, and you can actually have enough points to retire from the course before the semester ends. Yes, you heard that right. There is no final exam. If you finish, if you get all the points you want for an A in two months, you're done. I mean, hopefully you'll keep working and learn stuff, but you're done. You don't have to keep hanging out. There's no final exam waiting on you in the, uh, the last day of class. So, again, Daytona 5000 reminded me to start with this. There's more work due this uh, Friday than ever before in the history of this class for the very first week. And it's mostly because I like this group already. So I threw in some extra stuff that I usually don't even do the first week. You don't have to do them if you're not prepared for it yet. And that's true every week of the semester. If you're too bogged down uh, in a week or two or five or week seven and you have exams due in five other classes, you don't have to focus as hard on this one. If you've worked ahead and you already have points and you're kind of ahead of the game, uh, the only way you fail this class is to get behind and not do anything and keep putting stuff off, which brings me back to my point and then we'll move on. While other classes are being lame, work super hard in this one and get ahead. <laughs> Because once you buy a prize, it's yours to keep. And once you earn points, they're yours. They're never taken away. And I will probably, by the end of the semester, have offered, I don't know, 2,000, 2,100, 2,300, 2,600 points of opportunity. You only need about 1,500 points to get an A. Actually, it's only 1,400, right? 1,450? 13, no, it's 1,400. Okay, well, let's call it 13. I already love this class. Let's call it 13. Let's call it 1350. So, uh, well, I think I know I messed it up in the video because I couldn't remember, but it's usually 1450. That's okay. Well, good. You guys are going to have a light semester. It's only 1350. Anyway, there will probably be double the points offered that you even need to get an A. But do it early. Do it often. Don't put it off. That's how you get the A. Enjoy the class. And then you have time. You have the leverage, you have the flexibility to focus your time and energy on other classes as it uh, as you need to do that during the semester. Kaboom. There you go, day 25,000. So it looks like a ton of work. It is. But you do not have to do a ton of work every single week. You should early on, but you don't have to. It just means you'll have to do a ton of work at some point during the semester. Does that make sense? So back on track, yelling, uh, shouting people out. Calista Malfoy, give it back, Malfoy. Uh, by the way, five points to the first person that can tell me what was it that Harry Potter was asking Malfoy to give back. First one that, br that brings the right answer gets five points in this class already. First answer in the chat room. What did Harry Potter want back from Malfoy? First time chatter. Oh, I got first time chatter from Cars. Cars Sink. First time chatter from Destined Queen. Ooh. Destin Queen, good screen name. I love your destiny. Uh, first time chatter from Adastra. Old is the mindset, not the number. Thank you, Adastra. Uh, it's, it's both the number and the mindset for me. No, I'm joking. I'm uh, having a great time of life. Uh, two Tef is whoop, whoop, back in the house. Movie was good. Uh, to be honest, Two Tef, was there too many naked people in it? Was there too many breast shots? Was it too offensive to today's sensitive world? And it's okay if it was. 
offensive to some people in the sensitive world. I just have to get a finger on the pulse uh, of how sensitive people are anymore. First time chat. And by the way, the movie we're talking about is The Emerald Forest. I won't even call it a cult classic. It's a hidden gem of a film um, based on indigenous groups and indigenous life in the Amazon rainforest. And hopefully you like the intro and the exit because I got super excited about that film when I saw it as a kid back in the 80s, um, mostly because there was naked people. But then as an adult, also because there was naked people. But I, when I did research on that film and found out that they, there was an actual dam being constructed that was not a movie set. And the more I dug into it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this dam that's being built and the whole plot of this film, although it's a fanciful plot about magic and visions and, and indigenous rights and stuff, that's really kind of what's going on. But the setting for it was an actual real setting. And the vehicle for that film really was a dam that was going to displace hundreds of thousands of of, of acres of rainforest and all the indigenous groups in it. That shizzle was real. And they made a movie around it. I just love that film. And I hope you did too. Despite naked humans, which of course are always upsetting to somebody. Uh, first time chatter from F Fury Arsenal. <laughs> that's, that's a good screen name too. An arsenal of fury. <laughs> Uh, love it. And uh, can I get a shout out? I'm your favorite student, Reed Bacon. <laughs> uh, and Reed Bacon says, that is not me, bro. <laughs> oh my God. Good God. Fury Arsenal, you fake news. I knew it. There's fake news here already. Uh, uh, Jake Wrangler says, when uh, will the points from attending last week's Twix session be added? Thanks. Sorry. I got super busy, and uh, I'm a super slacker, so I didn't get those up uh, last week. I will try to do it directly following this very podcast. Thanks for the reminder, Jake Wrangler. Uh, Two Tef says, book. First time chatter from uh, uh, Dark Foe says, Remember? Remember? Remember all. Oh, is that? I didn't, I didn't even know what it was. Boom! Five points to Darkfo. Uh, Darkfo, please email me with your actual name. Email me. Don't put it in here. Your actual name, your screen name, and remember all. And I, I couldn't even remember what remember all was. <laughs> and Ben Sider says remembrance. <laughs> it's one of those remembering things. Uh, EW4140 says Neville's. Remember all. Oh, I don't know. Uh, EW threw in Neville's. All right, EW, you email me as well. You also just earned five points for putting in Neville. Neville Longbottom. That's his name, right? Or is that sexually offensive anymore? I don't know. Is Longbottom an offensive term? <laughs> Reed Bacon is saying the snitch. Wrong game, Reed Bacon. Eh. First time chatter from John C. White. Is there a place where I can find all of the assignments? Indeed. I hear Katie already answered you, but for all the rest of you, when you go onto the Moodle page uh, for this class, you can pan down and see different weeks. And here's a word to the wise so that no one gets scared. Uh, this happens every semester and people get terrified, but for you good students who are here early, let me explain it to you. Once you get down to about week eight or nine, I can't remember which one it is, you will no longer see any lecture quizzes. So every week, and I'll send out an email, by the way, uh, John C. White, every week I send out a weekly email saying, hey, here's all the things that are due this week. Uh, for the book reading quizzes, you can work ahead. You can do all the book reading quizzes tonight if you want for the whole semester. Well, except that one chapter I haven't done yet. But you can do virtually the whole book reading quizzes, and that's like 390 points at your leisure. Work ahead. Don't get behind. But every week, then we say, hey, here's these one, two, or three, or four lecture videos with a quiz attached that are due this week. Here's the international film of the, uh, of the week that's due this week. Uh, maybe we're going to do that game, Where's Waldo? How many of you actually want to do the Where's Waldo game if you watch the intro video for this course? Uh, it's a Place Your Professor or Fine Boyer or Where's Waldo. It's all the same game. If you want to do that, shout me out here in the chat room as well. 
So all those things happen every week. Uh, so you can only work ahead on the book reading quizzes, although I'm debating about letting you start to work ahead on some of the international films too. But you will get an email every week that says, hey, here is what's due this week. Uh-oh, I've got uh, Shree Stout. Shree Stout has dropped me a heart in this following. Thank you, Shree Stout. It's a good screen name too. So you'll get an email every Friday night or Saturday morning, typically uh, once I uh, sober up and drink a pot of coffee. And we'll tell you, here's the things that are due. Uh, and when you go to the Moodle site, you can actually see all the weeks lined up already for m most of these things, but not all. And that gets me back to about week six, seven, or eight is when I haven't scheduled the lecture quizzes yet. So you'll see, or should be able to see, that, oh, there's this quiz is due, this, this film is due, this is due, but they're all not active yet. They only become active that week. The book reading quizzes you can see all the way to the end of the semester. But at week seven or week eight, you won't see any lecture quizzes due yet because I haven't picked the topics that we're going to give to you. And that's mostly because I'm going to put up a survey and let you all pick what regions of the planet you would like to hear lectures about. So don't panic when you get to week five or six and you're like, I don't see any more lecture uh, material or any lecture quizzes for the rest of the semester. That means there is nothing else. That means there's not enough points. I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna lose, and everything's gonna be terrible. It's not. Uh, Vuv244 just dropped me a heart uh, and is following, thank you, Vuv. V-U-V, -V. I love it. So, remind me to put up that survey so you, the students, are gonna pick what lectures you would like me to do uh, for the rest of the semester. Uh, Poomped is now following, thank you, Poomped. Uh, and so I, I don't know what we're going to do just quite yet because you haven't picked them yet. Uh, but there will be, every single week of the semester, there will be a film quiz. There will be uh, video lecture quizzes. There will be a book reading quiz. There will be either Will's, Where's Waldo or some sort of flash quiz every week the entire semester. So don't panic just because you can't see it all yet. It all will be there when all is said and done. Does that help John C. White? Not all the assignments are all posted yet, but they all will be coming and there will be something every single week, literally until the last day of class. Two tests says never enough naked people. <laughs> Funny how your videos from 11 years ago still apply to today's society. It is funny, isn't it, to Tef? It seems like our society is not, it, 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 we all think we're evolving rapidly and all these changes are occurring and it's a crazy new world. It's really not. The older you get, the more you realize, oh, I've seen all these tricks before. A Fury Arsenal! Fury is now following. Thank you for the heart, Fury. <laughs> and Spatial Sun, ooh, good screen name. Spatial Sun dropped me a heart is following. Thank you, Spatial Sun. So, yeah, things aren't changing as fast as it appears. At your age, uh, you being younger folks, things seem like they're happening really rapidly and everything, whoa, everything's changing. Eh. Uh, you'll see the same themes in human history over and over again, actually in short cycles, too. So I've been, I'm old enough that I'm like, oh my, people are like, oh my God, President Trump's the worst president ever. It's the end of the world. And this is the second or third time I've seen this in my life. I'm like, sure, I wouldn't get your knickers in a, in a bunch quite yet about the end of days. Uh, people are like, oh my God, nuclear war, we're all gonna die. Yeah, this is the second round for me for that. I try to uh, not be dismissive of serious problems that human societies have and that the world has. I'm just not as pessimistic as most, and I encourage you all not to be. It's very easy to fall into looking at the 24-hour news cycle and the politi politicalization and the uh, uh, polarization that the United States is in right now, politically and culturally, and the polarization, you can kind of go around to democracies all over the planet Earth, and there's polarization, and there's two sides that all hate each other, and it's the end of days, and every democracy is gonna be to fail, everything's horrible, we're gonna go to nuclear war, and the climate's gonna melt, and you're like, D -d 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 -d. yes, there are problems, this is not the first time that 
human societies have dealt with virtually these exact same problems in the last hundred years, much less the last quarter of a million years since our species has been kind of hanging out and doing stuff. So take heart, my friends. Uh, take your college learning seriously. Uh, become curious. Learn about topics and in, in, in whole fields you've never thought about before. Be uh, uh, experimental. Try classes you've never thought you wanted to take that you just have a passing interest in. Because there's a lot to do in the world and there's a lot of fun to be had in your life and a lot of learning to do and a lot of help that we can deliver or you personally can deliver to other people. But you just have to have a slight bit of optimism and don't get too washed out with all the negativity. Sorry for that diatribe in a direction that nobody asked me about, but that's what we do here during the live Twitch online office hours. By the way, before I go any further, uh, this message is brought to you by Twitch. It's really not. I love Twitch. It's hilarious. I know it's mostly a gaming platform. However, if we get enough of you all to keep tuning into these things Monday nights, I uh, swear to Jehovah, I will have a, uh, an old school Atari that we will hook up by the end of the semester, and I will be a gamer on Twitch as well, and I will lecture to you about the uh, region of your choice while I'm playing Atari. So I'm, I'm throwing that challenge out there. It's all on you. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 is Blue Subaru says it was better than it, uh, I was expecting, going back to uh, Emerald Forest. I was honestly expecting it to be boring, but I found it more entertaining than I expected. There you go. There you go, Is Blue Subaru. By the way, that reminds me, when you watch international films, I, I, I have to say this kind of tongue-in-cheek. I'm really not trying to be, um, you know, too uh, dad-like. But try to take the films, not seriously, but try to, to carve out a couple few hours of your week to actually enjoy the films. See, I, I'm not even going to say take it seriously. I'm saying carve a couple hours out of your week to actually say, I want to disconnect, turn off the phone, don't be scrolling on the internet for, you know, chat rooms and reddits and porn while you're watching the film in another window. Seriously. Treat it like yoga or meditation. Actually go old school with me. Become a Luddite just for a couple hours a week. If you don't know what a Luddite is, look it up. It's awesome. Become a Luddite monk once a week and say, you know what? I'm actually going to go watch. I'm going to truly watch the international film for this week. And what we mean by watch is, again, turn everything else off. Invite friends over. Do it as a group. By the way, if you watch the film as a group and take notes on the film as a group, I heartily encourage you to take the quizzes together as a group. It's all about that interaction, the old school way of getting a small community of people together to talk about something that's happening right in front of you. So seriously, it's, this is for your good, not for me. I'm not saying do this so you'll do good in my class. I'm saying, trust me, if you take time to slow down once or twice a week, and one of those times is to truly enjoy a film, don't fast forward through it, don't do it on double speed, don't have distractions, just get in a dark room and watch a damn movie. It is uh, uh, liberating that you will be able to do that. Yeah, one of those uh, dorms has a theater in it. Is it West AJ or one of the honor? It's the honors. Yeah, it's a community honors dorm or something. They have a movie theater in it that seats like 20 or 30. Yeah, and then people in the past have gotten together and done that. So I heartily encourage team play for the international movies. But also, again, I don't want to use the words take it seriously. I'm just saying truly, truly take the time to embrace it and watch it at its natural pace, not times two or three or four speed. You'll thank me at the end. But if you do that every week, by the end of this semester, you will hit me up and say, there was like one or two or three films that changed my life. That was awesome. I'm like, I know, I know. I've been doing this a long time. But everybody now in today's world thinks, well, I just got to get points, so I don't care, so I'm just trying to suffer through this. And it's like, no, this is learning. It should not be suffering. And I know, two hours of your life just sitting still and watching a film. I know it's impossible without checking your film, your text because you know, you're know you a brain surgeon, you're on call, and there's so many emergencies that might happen in two hours that you have to be there for that Instagram post. 
<laughs> I know, I'm making fun of you, but TikTok. That's right, TikTok. Uh, but try to disconnect for your own mental health and for your full enjoyment of something new that you never ordinarily would watch one of these films unless I say, hey, do it for class. You might end up really, really liking some of these films because a lot of people do. Okay, that's enough of that di of the dad diatribe. Uh, the one and only guy says, how will we know when a flash quiz is up? Oh, you'll know, my friend. There'll be an email sent out that says, flash quiz, <laughs> it's on. And uh, for those of you that haven't read through the syllabus yet, which, I, again, I doubt is anybody here because you're all good students, the film quizzes actually kick in. They start on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon and only go till Tuesday. They don't go to Friday. They go Saturday to Tuesday. All the other assignments in this class go Friday night to the next Friday night. Uh, many times if I post a flash quiz, depending on the time of the week I post it, I'll just say this one just goes to Friday night too. But it could be that if we do something very special, like a live lecture here uh, or a live lecture somewhere else in the real world, like live live, I might do a flash quiz that only lasts 24 hours. So I try to make them, the harder that you all have to work at it, the more exclusive I try to make it. So if I did a live lecture on campus, by the way, how many of you would like to come to a live lecture that I would do on a small classroom on campus? Uh, if I did a small lecture somewhere on campus, the students who came to that actual lecture, I would want to them, they worked hard, they went out of their way, I would want them to benefit them, and so I would make the flash quiz very exclusively tight and be like, no, it's only two hours starting right now while they're still here in the classroom. Otherwise, if it's something that's recorded, I'll be like, oh, it's a 48-hour flash quiz, or it's the whole week. So you do have to pay attention when those flash quizzes come up. Does that make sense, one and only guy? But every time I send anything, be it the weekly email or a flash quiz announcement during the week, I will give you very explicit instructions of this quiz is, do is due in 48 hours. This quiz is due at 1 p.m. on Tuesday or 4 p.m. on Thursday. It's very explicit, so be sure to read everything. If I send you an email, I know email is antiquated too. But if I bother to send you an email, it's about information about quizzes that's going to benefit you. So please read through them. Don't just blow them off and say, well, everything's due Friday. Not everything. Okay. Reed Bacon says, how do you pick your movies? Well, I just, I'm old, dude. So I just have watched lots of stuff in life. However, I'm always looking for new stuff. Uh, and I know there's a lot of good content out there that I've not gotten to. You, one can only do so much in life. One can only watch so many movies, can only read so many books. So if you all have recommendations for uh, international international films uh, that are applicable to this class, by all means, send them my way, and I'll see if I can work them in. Jake Rambler says, awesome, thanks. Uh, Plaid Katie answered somebody else. Is Blue Subaru, where do we find the enrollment code key for Moodle? Uh, Subaru, if you bought the ebook, they sent you a confirmation receipt that you bought that book. And in that confirmation email receipt is the instructions on how to get on Moodle and the course code. There's also a set of instructions about how to access the book on Vital Source. And I can't remember, Katie, does the Vital Source instructions come first or the Moodle enrollment stuff come first? I can't remember. First is where do you get the ebook and Moodle? Right, so the first part of the email is about how to access your book, and then the second part is how to access Moodle with the code. If you bought a paper copy, it's in the inside front cover. I'm a big fan of paper, because you just, inside front cover, there it is. Okay, and if you didn't get that email after you purchased the book online, check your spam folder. Uh, sometimes text filter just grabs stuff randomly and throws it into spam, so... If you definitely bought the book and you did not get an, an email confirmation receipt, go check your spam folder. Otherwise, hit the company up or hit us up, and we'll hit up the company on your behalf and say, dude, where's this student's book at? What happened? Okay. Uh, let's see. We're the first time chatter from Shree Stout, who also followed. Thank you, Shree Stout. Uh, doesn't matter which source I buy the textbook from, Red Shelf or Vital Source. Uh, we've only ever really dealt with Vital Source, but if you're com comfortable with Red Shelf, go for it. Mary Handy 23 just dropped me a heart. Thank you, Mary Handy. And is following. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Sean says, I picked Red Shelf and it just gave me a code for Moodle. Uh, so, Sean, it didn't. Those, those are, they said they were asking that question. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, well, either one will work. I think I guess it gives you an option when you go to buy it on. Yeah, I've never looked. I don't know. That's the publisher. I don't deal with that crap. I just write the book. They, they're the ones that make the money on it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dustin Queen uh, says, on the topic of Harry Potter, what is the best Harry Potter house? Uh, Gryffindor, Slytherin. I mean, obviously, uh, the plaid one, right? <laughs> uh, I don't have a favorite house. However, I do have a favorite movie. Uh, in the movie, the only movie I can tolerate watching more than once is um, the one with Gary Oldman, um, where he's uh, uh, Sirius Black. Sirius Black. Um, that one's fun. I like that particular film. What, what's the name of that one? Harry Potter meets Sirius Black. I can't remember. <laughs> Harry Potter dates Sirius Black. I don't know what they would title things in today's. A politically correct world. Uh, it's not Phoenix or one of those. It's not Revenge or something. Uh, somebody give me a shout out. Which one? Which Harry Potter introduced uh, a serious black? Shreese Tell says, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, Daytona 5000 says, can we get some kind of, of a summary of this stream with key questions and all that later? Key questions? Hmm. I don't know about that. That sounds like work, Daytona. However, we, we, re we record these. <laughs> Uh, and they're posted up on Twitch for a period of time. But then we also transfer them to, we also transfer these to our the YouTube Plaid Avenger channel too, I believe. So, oh, you guys need to get into the refrigerator. Sorry, we're in a secret location that has refrigeration. I'm in a meat locker right now. Uh, let's see, uh, Tersity for the dead world leaders. It possible to put former leaders. Hmm. I, I would consider former leaders, but only if they're still politically active. I mean, again, they, uh, what I mean by that, Tercity, is they don't have to still be in office, but they have to be politically active because you could just stack the deck with all world leaders that are 95 years old. I know where you're going with this. You're going to say Jimmy Carter, right? Come on. Come on. Don't make fun of Jimmy Carter. Uh, he's just in the news because he's like 101, and he's been in what do you call the terminal care? He's been in hospice care for like six months, and he's still f alive. So, no, you can't pick anybody on planet Earth who's literally getting ready to die just because they were a president 30 or 40 or 50 years ago. It has to be somebody that was a president and could become president again. Uh, see, Donald Trump, uh, he was president, but he's still very much alive and well. He might become president again. He's politically active. So he could go on. And I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to offend the Trump people. I'm just saying – as an example, there are leaders that are out of office that may come back into office. Those are fair game, but not 101-year-old former leaders from 50 years ago. Because that's just not playing fair. Come on. You can't cherry pick. You got to pick the real deals. Uh, Fury Arsenal says this class is the bee's knees. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the 21st century from 1950, Fury Arsenal, with that phrase, the bee's knees. <laughs> that might be a 1920s phrase. How did you even know that phrase? Uh, is Blue Subaru says, I got into Moodle site and I love the layout of it. Thank you, Blue Subaru. You know, a lot of students, um, I, I've caught flack in the past where students are like, this class sucks. They make you buy this book and they make you do this. We can just do this in Canvas. It's stupid. And my response is, I don't really like Canvas. Uh, I don't think it has a natural flow. We've been using Moodle for 15 years now precisely because it has an easy, elegant, natural flow of outlining the work and how things are going and how to check your grades. You may disagree, uh, but most of the students and the feedback we've gotten is that, yeah, Moodle is kind of way cooler. And then the other thing that you all are um, too transient to uh, take note of is that about every 10 years, Virginia Tech completely trashes their old system and adopts a new one. So this is, the, uh, this is the, literally the third system that I have lived through. I ain't even that old. I mean, I'm almost dead, but I ain't that old. And I've been here for three complete washouts of the entire course platform system for Virginia Tech and instituting a new one. And by the way, it's coming due again. I think we've only got another couple years left on Canvas before they're like, oh, there's a flashy new toy uh, that we're going to embrace and 
move to. Again, ask any old professors, how have you been doing Canvas your whole life? And they'll just shake their head and be like, oh my God, no. This is the third time I've had to relearn technology. So that's why also we do Moodle because it's an outside platform that never changes because it's up to us. We control that and we like that consistency over the years uh, that this is a system that we're familiar with that we can tweak at will. Uh, we can fix it to make it uh, do what we want it to do, and that's very liberating for me as a professor. And also, it's mostly for you all because I'm like, no, this thing is slick. This is a slick system compared to Canvas, which is still a bit clunky. Just from a visual standpoint, I'm, I'm sure it's wonderful for all your other classes. Okay, um, first time chatter from Hooped. <laughs> Says, babe, wake up, the new podcast dropped. <laughs> Class of 07. <laughs> Class of 07. Wow. Was I really teaching in 07? I'm joking. I was teaching in 97. Thank you for tuning in, Poomped. Uh, you had the class before it even went to mega class. So you had the mega, you had the class uh, it, to a mere uh, 550 people in McBride 100 back in the day, or the dizzle, uh, as you see fit to say. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Poomped. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, gosh, you're going on 07, so. <laughs> How many years is that? Like you're going on 20 years ago you took the class? You're too awesome. Uh, I, I'm not that awesome, but you're awesome. Uh, Dark Bow with the Velociraptor face is what I always call it. I don't even know what that means. Uh, the Blind Barber back in the hizzle saying, Dr. Strangelove changed my life. Boom. Great film. Hey, maybe we, we do a whole side tangent of films this semester for, uh, for folks that like that. Maybe we do a whole, like a series like a limited three or four film series just on like nuclear war. <laughs> I know I shouldn't be laughing, but there's some damn good movies. I could put together a list of like three of movies right this second. I'm like, oh my gosh, this would be good to introduce younger people to. Uh, uh, Dr. Strangelove would be one. Uh, war Games would be one. <laughs> The Day After, which was a made-for-TV movie, which scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Hunt for Red October. Hunt for Red October. I mean, oh, well, that'd be a Cold War. We could do a whole Cold War film series. That might be fun. Think about that. Mull over. Let's start a VT student film club. Damn it, I think I said that years ago, and we still haven't done it. Anybody out there want to start a VT film club, uh, I will be the, uh, what do you call it, the... Faculty advisor. <laughs> Dude, we could probably rent out Burris and do crap like that. That'd be fun. Uh, first time chatter from Fear X BC. It says, follow me on TikTok. We'll do Fear X BC. Can you do that for me, Katie? I don't know how to follow people. The one and only guy. Oh, okay. I wish I was here for the first lot. Uh, okay, hang on, everybody. Oh, you think, is this somebody actually in here, or is this somebody that tuned in? Okay, hang on, Fear XBC. If you if you comment again, it will follow you. Uh, the only, oh, one only guy says, I wish I was here for the first live stream, but I was in New Cadet for a week of Core Cadets. That's right, you guys were just moving in. Uh, but that's, that's okay. We're covering a lot of the same ground, so hopefully this is not too boring for the folks that were here last Monday. I already can't remember what we did last Monday, so... Uh, okay, so I'm seeing me, I would, me, I'd like to come. What was that in reference to? I forgot what I asked you. Oh, live lecture. Uh, first time chatter from a cat whisperer. Ooh, we have got a cat whisperer in our class. That's awesome. Uh, who would like to come to a live lecture? Uh, Sean says, sounds fun. First time chatter from Cranky Toaster. <laughs> Haven't we all had a Cranky Toaster in our lives? That's a great screen name. Well, I'll still read it. I'm having trouble activating my email Moodle since I never got the activation email. There you go. Well, like we said earlier, check your spam folder or Katie said she already helped you out. And Cranky Toaster, hopefully once they get on Moodle, won't be so cranky. And give us the bread toasted the way we want. First time chatter from Sadi21. Sadi? Sadi? It's a prisoner of Azkaban. Or Azkaban. Uh, 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 Sadie, uh, and the one, the only guy, 
uh, both of you all email me. You just also got five points for coming up with the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, when you email me, give me your real name and your screen name in Azkaban, and I'll know to give you five points. First time chatter from Saigalmao. Saig Ooh, that one's a tough one. Saigalmao. Saigalmao says, hello, sorry I'm late. It's quite all right, Saigalmao. We don't take attendance. <laughs> this is all... This is all voluntary. He did not have to be here. This is all chill. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Tersity. I called out Tersity. Tersity was trying to get Jimmy Carter in there. Come on now. That's just mean, Tersity. You can do better than that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Two Taff says, already plotted with half the class to take out terrorist leaders with his tic-tac-toe. Well, then you got to... By the way, no one's emailed me who you want on this list. That's another thing. The, the list comes from you all. So who do you want on the World Leader Death Watch uh, that will make it to the tic-tac-toe board? Uh, I, I don't really... This is a tough semester for me. I don't really know of any right off the top of my head that I think will see an imminent demise in the next three and a half months. And there usually there's some easy ones. Remember, I've been doing this for a long time. So Osama bin Laden was on the list for a long time. Fidel Castro was on the list for 20 years. Um, there, uh, Queen Elizabeth was on the list for 25 years. So there were always some obvious choices, but I don't know of any real obvious ones right this second. Again, also keep in mind for the World Leader Death Watch that they don't have to die. Uh, it could be someone that is deposed from power. Again, not someone whose term, not a democratically elected leader whose term is ending next month. That doesn't count. But it's somebody who does not survive the term that they were elected to. So either they died in office or they were overthrown in a coup. Uh, I.e., ergo, e.g., go see any place in the Sahel region of Africa, of which there's been five political or military coups in the last two years. So Niger would have been a great choice, but none of you would have chose that because you don't know where Niger is and you don't know the president of Niger. <laughs> but that's what this exercise is all about, is thinking critically, critically of, oh, where are the places with leaders that are under duress or could be under duress? So you know, like right this second, I'm trying to think out loud. I would accept, and I, I don't think this guy's going to die, but... It's feasible. A guy named Imran Khan in Pakistan. He actually already was deposed from power last year, and, but now the government who kind of pulled a military coup uh, just charged him with, I can't even remember, some sort of crimes and are jailing him even though he's a popular leader who probably would get reelected. So he might be in jail. And I, again, I... If you know about Pakistan at all, you know it's very politically chaotic. Off the top of my head, I'd say Imran Khan is a candidate that might not survive the semester. The military might decide they have to go ahead and kill him because he's going to get too popular. He could become a rallying uh, candidate in Pakistan. So that troubles me. Uh, I don't love Imran Khan, but I kind of respect the guy. He's an ex-cricket player who became the president of Pakistan and was trying to uh, fight corruption and do some things, but got taken out in the fray. So people like that. Uh, I would not choose Vladimir Putin. I would not choose Xi Jinping of China. Uh, these are strong men. They're never leaving office, never. Uh, even when they die, they'll probably still be in power for a year to two while the corpse decays. So don't look towards uh, dictators for picks unless it's a dictatorship that's not in full control of their country. Uh, that's why Fidel Castro always made my list because Cuba could have flipped into revolution any time in the last 50 years. They just never did. Uh, Russia's not going to flip into uh, chaos or revolution, and China certainly is not. They've got a lid on China right now. Uh, uh, it's a pressure cooker uh, uh, with pot stickers in it. Th that society ain't going nowhere. Clamp down. Lids on it. Not going nowhere. Leaders ain't going nowhere. Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin are leaders for a life. Uh, for a life. And maybe beyond life. So maybe for World Leader Death Watch, maybe peruse around places in uh, 
Central Asia, uh, perhaps some African countries that may see some turbulence. Again, the Sahel region, S-A-H-E-L, is a very specific region you'll learn about in this class, where coups seem to be happening with increasing frequency. Oh, oh, i tell you what, okay. I would put this on the World Leader Death Watch. The current guy in charge of Niger. The current guy is a military uh, uh, bully who overthrew the government because he's the head of the military uh, and has now made himself leader for life. However, he's only been in office for a month and there is a lot of talk, speculation, and perhaps action in Western Africa sponsored by the United States, I will tell you, uh, to raise a military force to overthrow him uh, back and put the democratically elected leader back in power in Niger. I would put that dude on there. He is a very likely candidate to either be gobbled up by internal uh, uh, conflicts that maybe one of his sub-generals will take him out in a coup, in another coup, or that outside military intervention will see his demise either politically or his demise off the face of the planet permanently. That's a very good pick. But you all think about those things and read the current events and see what you come up with and email me your choices for who should be on World Leader Death Watch. Uh, but yes, 2TEF, if you want to take out terrorist leaders, put them on the Death Watch and you have my blessing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Sai Gualmo Mao, Sai Gualmao says, I have a question about the videos. Not exactly like important, but a random question. That's what I'm here for, Sai. Uh, wouldn't some cultural things that can be geographed no longer be homogeneous due to travel and the internet. Okay. Uh, I'll try to unpack that one. Um, English is not your first language. Quite all right. Wouldn't some cultural things that can be geographed. Okay. I think so what you're trying to say is, are there some cultural things that can no longer be mapped? Geographed no longer. Can no longer be mapped, be homogeneous. Oh, you're referencing my first lecture where I was talking about the region of a, have a homogeneous trait. Ah, uh, okay, I think I can answer you now, uh, Sai. So remember that lecture was teaching you that you, the user, chooses what the region is based on some homogeneous trait that applies to the region of your creation. So when you are the one that draw the lines, you know, my West Africa might be different from your West Africa. You might include some areas that I don't include, and that's because we're looking at different homogeneous traits. So you can look at a historical homogeneous trait and make a region that no longer exists in today's world. For example, the Mongol Empire. The Mongol Empire, we can identify with pretty good precision. We can draw a line and say, here was the Mongol Empire region at its height of power in say 1400. Obviously it's gone now. So, but that doesn't mean you can't make a region out of it. So there may be lots of different regions on planet earth where I have drawn a region or you may draw a different region, uh, but we're looking at different factors and perhaps even at different time periods that doesn't mean that they're not legitimate they're totally legitimate you just have to identify what uh, homogeneous traits you're using to define that region does that make any sense i'm not even sure if that's the question you're asking but that's the answer that i came up with so there's lots of ways of defining anything and you can do it historically as well and even though uh, there definitely was a mongol region a very powerful one, which spanned from Europe to China. It might have been the biggest single kind of homogeneous region at any given point in human history, the largest contiguous empire ever uh, in all human history. And it's something we all recognize and understand, but it doesn't exist any longer. There might be elements, influences that the Mongols had amongst all of those regions. But in today's world, you really have to make a point of saying, well, if I'm going to make this Mongol region, I'm definitely and distinctly talking about something historical, not something happening in today's world right now. Clumsy Chopsticks has joined and has dropped me a heart. Thank you, Clumsy Chopsticks. I'm here to help you pick them up whenever you drop them. 
Uh, is Blue Subaru says, I despise Canvas. I cannot express my hatred towards Canvas. <laughs> Thank you for the backup, Subaru. Uh, Asai also says, Yo, if anybody wants to work together on assignments, just shoot me an email. I said, You must snap or my number. We can do stuff together. Uh, oh, and they also provided their uh, email. Well played, uh, 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 Sai. I'm calling you Sai just because I think that's how you pronounce your name. I could be totally wrong, and you can uh, correct me. So uh, I do encourage team play, especially with the movies. However, I will ask you for the book reading quizzes uh, and the video quizzes. I do encourage you to, to take that material seriously and watch it on your own, and please take those quizzes on your own. But when it comes to other things like even Where is Waldo or the Death Watch, and certainly the films, I kind of do encourage you to work together. I want you to work together on all these things, but remember, don't cheat yourself out of learning. So do take the assignment seriously and do the readings and the, watch the videos yourself. And you should challenge yourself to take the video or take the quizzes for that stuff uh, on your own as well. By the way, uh, if you don't find a study group or a group uh, of people that want to work together, I should throw this out too. This is all as an online class, uh, particularly with the film quizzes, certainly with the book quizzes, and definitely with the lecture quizzes. You can use your notes when you take the quiz. Please take good notes. Me lecturing online uh, in a recorded fashion that you just watch whenever you want, it's still a lecture. Treat it like you would a lecture that you went and go, saw live. Take notes on it. Take highlights on it so that you know that when you go take the quiz, you have a good set of cliff notes there uh, at your disposal if you stumble across a question you don't know. Uh, I want to encourage that. But taking note, paying attention, watching the lecture, watching the film, doing the readings, taking notes. That's the learning process, my friends. The quiz is simply a random test of those things you've learned. The learning is what's important, not the quizzes. I know all you, most people care about is a grade. I care about you getting smarter. I care about you uh, getting some knowledge. I care about you uh, developing some curiosity and a base understanding of the world. That's what I'm here for. So do yourself a favor and do well in this course. It'll stay with you the rest of your life. It's going to help you in a myriad of ways which we can't even define. You'll just be a smarter person and understand what's going on in the world much better than the average bear. Pumped drops out. Hunt for Red October. Bam. Calista Malfoy says, I was world region class of 09. And that's why we were giving it back Malfoy back in 09. When did the Harry Poop, uh, Pooper Potter movies? <laughs> when did Harry Poop? Harry Poop. But the screen name Poops got me pooped. Uh, when did Harry Poop start? 2000? 2001? Uh, so what movie were they on when you graduated in 09, Callisto? Uh, uh, Sadi says, I literally got up at 5 in the morning to drive three and a half hours so I can see Oppenheimer at IMAX 700, 70 millimeter. I love, oh, I didn't even, I haven't even seen Oppenheimer yet. That's another Cold War movie. I don't know. Seriously, Sadi 21, did they in the film at all talk about uh, 2001's first Harry Potter? Bam, called it. Uh, Sadi, did they at any point in Oppenheimer actually reference the decision-making process of why the U.S. dropped two atomic bombs, because that's why I would use Oppenheimer in a Cold War or a, a Cold War film series, because I can give you a, a 10 or 20 minute lecture right this second on why the U.S. did it, and it's not the reasons that most people think. I mean, it's like, oh, it's because Japan sucked and we wanted to beat them. It's like, maybe, but there's definitely some other things that were going on in the background. Okay. Uh, Tar City says, favorite city, country. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's already 9 o'clock. What happened? What happened? What happened? Okay. Uh, let's see. What? What? Yeah, I know. I'm still going to answer all the questions, but I want to do this first. What's the funniest thing we've said so far tonight? Um, Gary Oldman's character. Uh, it is. Or the it, remember all. Remember all. Well, I already got two people that are getting points yeah. for that. Okay, here's the deal, friends. Here's the deal. If you've made it for one hour and one minute into this online live office hour, here's your chance to earn five more points just for hanging out. Right this second, you have 60 seconds, 60 seconds only. You have to email me at J-O-B-O-Y-E-R at vt.edu. You have to have the keywords serious black 
and underneath Sirius Black, you put your actual name and your screen name. And if you don't have a screen name, just say, I don't have a screen name. Uh, and you just got five points, but you have to do it in 60 seconds. You have till 9.03 to email me to get five points just for hanging out. That's how hard this class is. <laughs> Sirius Black by 9.03 p.m. If you watch this, uh, a, a recording of this tomorrow, and you're like, oh, I forgot. Sorry, I just saw this recording. I want points. No, it's it's for the people who are here. It's for the people. It's for the community that's come together and taken their time to make it our time. <laughs> They're the ones who get five points. Uh, Tar City says, favorite city slash country other than U.S. Oh, I love all the countries of the world. Uh, Vietnam is a particular uh, favorite in my heart of hearts uh, but there's no place on planet earth I don't have a good time in I really love Scotland and Ireland um, just got back from Switzerland it was great it's hard to hate really any country in Europe it's just an adult playground of fun and beverages um, Morocco I genuinely really liked um, Russia is challenging <laughs> But Vietnam, Vietnam always, something just tugs at the heartstrings when I hear about, think about Vietnam. Uh, Psy Guy, uh, Psy Guy, okay, thank you, Psy Guy. Uh, I, I should have known to pronounce it that way. Psy Guy, L-M-A-O, laughing my ass off. Psy Guy, uh, Tur City says, Diane Feinstein, I think you mispronounced that, might be close. That's true. I try to go for the uh, head of sovereign states, but we can. I try not to do politicians at lower in the lower houses. Uh, oh, Trutev says Zelensky locked Jin. I think you meant Zelensky locked in. He would be a decent pick. Uh, the Russians are 100% trying to kill his ass. Uh, if they got any kind of intelligence of where he was at, they'd bomb that building. I would put. I like Zelensky, but he is definitely a man under threat. Definitely. Um, uh, Poop says, Auditing World Region Spring 2001 during Arab Spring. Oh, my God. I'm sorry to say 2011 during Arab Spring was wild. That was a wild semester. That's right before we supersized the class and went to Burst. Or were we in Burst then? I can never remember what year we were in Burst. Sadi says, How does the Twitch talk grade factored in? Could you clarify that again? Oh, I just did, Sadi. You just emailed me. You got, you got five more points. I just said, I just said five. Okay. Uh, and Saudi also shouted out if anybody wants to work in the group. See, I love this. Community's coming together. Community, baby. Community. Um, first time chatter from Gallagher. <laughs> oh, my God. Gallagher. I haven't heard that term for a while. Gallagher is up in the hizzle. Says, spoil it for him. Quick. <laughs> Oppenheimer Cold War. That's my professor. Bam. They did reference choosing between the different cities and the pros and cons of them in Oppenheimer. Thank you, Tercity, but actually part of the reason why uh, the United States dropped atomic weaponry was because of uh, the USSR. I'll leave it there if you're curious about what I mean. We'll have to come back to that for a future lecture after we watch Op Oppenheimer. Uh, what's this? What's the uh, M MEO? Someone put it in. I don't, I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys got my email, and you got it in time. It could be even 9.04. I'm sure you're all fine. Uh, Calista Malfoy said, Half-Blood Prince came out right after I graduated. <laughs> damn, you still had two movies to go after that, wasn't it? Or three movies. That was a lot of damn movies. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think the decision-making process was more of a cameo. The strategy behind selecting where to drop the bombs is interesting to know more about. Yep, it is. Uh, Oppenheimer, of course, is a fascinating person. That's why they did a whole movie on him. Uh, but as a armchair historian and a teacher of how the world works, uh, the reasoning behind the bomb, the bombing of two Japanese cities is much more important than the man himself uh, in the broad spectrum of history and modern history and understanding the modern world. Uh, but we are wrapping up. We're already over an hour over the online office hour, so I wasn't trying to hold you all here all night. Did anybody have any like questions about how the class works? Again, mostly it's – what's that? 
Oh yeah, and how was your first day of class? I mostly, again, people that jump into this are the creme de la creme, the best of the best students. Let's just be honest. So you all probably had a great first day, and you're probably already active in this course, and you know what's going on. But if you have any other questions of specifics of how things particularly work, I think the syllabus and the video I did uh, just a couple weeks ago explain it in pretty good detail. And we talked about it a lot last Monday, and we talked about it a bit tonight. So I think you guys are all on the right path. But if you have movie suggestions or uh, alternative assignment suggestions, uh, the ways that you can earn points in different ways that I've not thought of, I'm always open to expanding uh, the class to new activities and new and fun things. Uh, however, the office hour is now up. We're over an hour. You're keeping me late, or I'm keeping you late one way or the other. i got to go home and watch uh, um, Gary Oldman now. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tal Jen says, great professor with wonderful taste in countries. I'm so glad I took this class. Oh, well, thank you, Tal Jen. Uh, Toys R Us kid back in the hizzle. I remember that screen name. In class in 2010, I believe we were in Burris Hall. Whew. I can't even remember anymore. It's been so long. Psy Guy drops his email again, his or her email. Does anybody wants to work together in the class? And uh, Psy Guy also says, have you ever heard of something called Peter, someone called Peter Zihan? That does sound familiar. Um, that does sound familiar, one and only guy. Uh, but I'll have to look it up or send me a link to whatever you want me to read uh, in my email. But thank you all for tuning in. We'll do the same thing, uh, same plaid time, same plaid Twitch channel on next Monday night or... If enough of you want me to do something before then, we'll jump online again, maybe at the tail end of the first week of classes. Otherwise, hope you had a great, great, great first day of classes. I know you kicked all of its asses. I hope you have a first great week of the fall 2023 semester, and you have a fantastic time here in World Regions and learn a whole bunch of stuff that makes you more smart. Because remember... And that's what we're in college for. <laughs> oh, modern. Oh, Motor Brothers back in the hizzle saying, thank you, spent, spending my points to highlight this message. I, I wish I knew what that meant, but thank you. Oh, you earned chat points. I don't earn anything. I'm just here doing the heavy lifting. I don't get any points at all. I just give out the points. Okay. Uh, all the optimism at the beginning of the semester from Toys R Us kids. Thank you. I should do more inspirational speaking. I know I missed my calling. I should be doing that. I should be doing that Tony Robbins stuff. I know you guys are too young for that, but Katie just laughed. <laughs> okay, we'll see you all next week. Have a great week. Have any questions or comments or recommendations about anything? You always got me on the emails, brothers and sisters. I am here for you. This is your class. This is your semester. This is your college experience. So get all that you want to out of it and more. But for now, until next week, party on.